So hope you're doing well. My name is Iqbal Chaudhary. I'm a PhD student in mechanical engineering uh, at Hopkins and the director of education in the Graduate Consulting Club. I'm absolutely thrilled to have you here and welcome uh, to the second installment of Fireside Management Chat. Uh, this is going to be a lecture series, as I said previously. Uh, some of you were here. Uh, where every every other Friday I sit with a host, um, I sit with a guest and uh, do this uh, at noon. And the idea is to uh, find answers to some of the burning questions regarding consulting or management consulting uh, companies. So without for much further ado, I'd like to welcome today's speaker, Nick Edwards. So Nick, thanks a lot for joining us. Uh, Nick is a neuroscientist by with uh, diverse interest. Um, he has, uh, if I say, several irons in the fire. <laughs> so he's the host of Once a Scientist uh, podcast, where um, he interviews scientists about their careers in academia and beyond. Uh, the podcast has a section called Consulting 101, and I loved it. Uh, it has five fantastic episodes. I strongly recommend all of you to check it out. Um, Nick is a neuroscientist, as I said, by training. He did his PhD um, and postdoctoral training at Brown University, NIH, and UC San Diego. And after that, he decided to join Boston Consulting Group as a business strategy person in San Di and uh, later came back to San Diego for to work for Illumina. So now he's working for a biotech company called uh, Resilience. So um, yeah, over to you, Nick. Thanks a lot for joining. And we hope we learned something very exciting and cool from you about consulting and management. All right, well, I hope so too, um, but you never know. So uh, good, to, good to be here, everyone. Um, thanks so much for, for joining. And uh, if you do wanna check out that Consulting 101 series, uh, I have a website, it's called onceascientist.net. It's like once a scientist, always a scientist. And it's .net, because I couldn't get .com. Um, so it's great to meet all of you. Uh, and excited to talk to you about my, my path. Uh, let me actually share my screen. Oh, sorry. It says that we've disabled screen sharing for the, for the talk. I'm happy to just kind of talk through it, if that's. You're on, you're on mute, Iqbal. Let me enable screen sharing, sorry. Okay. That's all right, no worries. So yeah, I'll just, uh, as a quick introduction, um, I have, yeah, I, I, I do have a lot of interests. <laughs> and, and can, you, can you try sharing once again, please? Yeah, let me try it. There we go. Uh, uh, looks like it's working. Okay. All right. So I, I imagine you can see my screen. Okay. So there we go. Is, is that working? Yes, okay. it is. Perfect. All right. So um, yeah, as Iqbal mentioned, I have a, a background in a number of different things and have worked in consulting. Um, I'm no longer doing that for various reasons, but um, it was a great opportunity, really enjoyed it. Um, and it was a really awesome transition point uh, for me and for my career. And so I'm happy to talk about that, answer any questions. Uh, Iqbal, if, if it's okay with you, you know, I'm, I'm fine if you guys just wanna jump in and ask questions as we go along, uh, feel free. You can do it in the chat bar or you can just like jump into the conversation and. To, and, and interrupt me because like yes it is totally fine to uh jump in unmute yourself uh, and jump in with a question and let's try to make it as interactive as possible yeah that sounds good to me so um yeah i as you can see uh i have surfboards behind me and this is just my garage um i live in san diego and I uh, have been here for uh, a couple of years, uh, been back and forth though, I've lived all over the country and I did my PhD actually uh, in Baltimore. So uh, I'm very familiar with the area. I lived um, just one block north of Patterson Park. So um, yeah, I, I love Baltimore. Um, Hopkins is such, a, such an amazing place. And, and so really excited for each of you and, and uh, you know, figuring out what your next career path 
uh, career step is because it's kind of scary and kind of challenging. Um, and that, and let me just say that that's always the case. Um, it doesn't matter whether you're going to stay in academia or whether you're going to uh, go into a career in industry or uh, me a few years out after I've finished my PhD and my postdoc and uh, done a bunch of different things, like career stuff is still, uh, it's, it's unnerving and unsettling and it's kind of scary. And so um, that's, that's one of the things that, that I really try and uh, emphasize in the podcast is that, you know, people that go into these various careers are just normal people. We all, we have all gone through the same, similar challenges uh, that you may have gone through. And uh, it's really important to recognize that to me because, um, you know, behind every person that you think or see as successful, there's a story. And um, that's, that's the idea of the podcast that I do at Once a Scientist is to highlight those stories and to figure out like, what are, what are the challenges that people went through? Um, because it's, it's not a linear path always. So uh, let me just give you a quick background about myself. Um, so this is my timeline since when I started my PhD. So I had, a, if you can see my cursor here, uh, in April 2011, I finished my undergraduate degree. And um, that same three days after that, I think, um, we had uh, our first child. So um, I, my partner and I, we, uh, we had a daughter at this point. And so um, throughout this entire PhD period, uh, I had one child and we had a second uh, right here in the middle of 2015. And so by the time I graduated my PhD and went on to my postdoc, we had two kids. Um, and it was challenging <laughs> to say the least. Um, but I, 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 at the same time, I don't regret it. Um, not necessarily the point of my talk, but uh, if you do have questions, you know, about those types of things like managing work-life balance and, and uh, um, you know, those types of like family related things, for example, um, you know, I'm, I'm happy to kind of talk about those as well. But so when I was uh, in, in 2011, I started my PhD, it was at Brown University and uh, it was this joint program between Brown and the NIH. Uh, I uh, did my PhD in neuroscience. It was at the National Institute on Drug Abuse, which is uh, on the Bayview campus at uh, Hopkins. And uh, I did research on addiction and the very basic mechanisms of re reward and addiction in the brain. And uh, for these first, what, one, two, three years, right here, um, I failed miserably in grad school. <laughs> and I mean that like in, in all sincerity. Um, I had, I went through three different advisors. Um, I had like four different projects, big projects that just completely failed. And, uh, and, I, and I didn't even get like interpretable results from them. And so three years into my PhD, uh, I had an idea for a new project and I was super excited about it. And I went into my PI and I told him, uh, I sent him an email actually, I told him, I have this idea and he was all excited about it in the email. And then I go there and I was being, uh, and, I, and I had a co-advisor situation and I was kind of ambushed by them. And uh, they, he sat me down and somehow unbeknownst to me, they had talked behind the scenes and, they, and he sat me down and he said, uh, Nick, you need to decide whether science is right for you. And uh, this was three years into graduate school and like I was embarrassed, like I, I, I cried in front of him. <laughs> And, uh, and, and it was this point where I was like, am I even gonna finish this stupid PhD? Um, and, and I went home and I had to really like think and, and kind of think introspectively and deeply. And I started looking at consulting as an option at that point, just like very cursory look. And, uh, but within like a week or two, I decided, no, I'm gonna stay and I'm gonna do this. If somebody else can do it, I can figure it out. And, uh, and so I came back to my PhD advisor and I was like, look, I'm going to, I'm going to make this work. 
and, uh, and, and I'm going to learn this new technique. Uh, it's called patch clamp electrophysiology. It's, uh, it, it's very um, technical and, and, and challenging to, to get good at. Um, but I, I just put my head down and dedicated a lot of effort to it. And uh, within the next year and a half, I had um, finished my PhD. I had uh, published a paper and, um, and kind of like revived my hopes in, uh, of becoming a PI, a professor. And uh, I was really excited about it. The, the paper I published was kind of a high impact paper. And so um, I, I decided, okay, I, I'm gonna figure out I, what I'm gonna do is like, I've always been a, I've always been a, a surfer, like I grew up surfing. Um, and I knew that I wanted to live near the ocean. Um, and I also thought like maybe the, the biotech industry could be interesting. And so I, I kind of planned it so that I could have best of both worlds during my postdoc and came to San Diego because they also had, you know, one of the best neuroscience uh, departments in the country. And so I came here for postdoc um, was things actually like kicked off really well in the postdoc and the project started going uh, really well. I was getting a lot of traction and um, but about a year in, I started just kind of like, I, well, the reality is I went surfing one day. And uh, when I was out in the ocean, it was like a really, really good day. Um, and, I, and I thought, you know, like, I love science, but I really love the ocean. <laughs> and, um, and, and like, it was therapeutic for me. And um, it's just it's something that, that has always been a big part of my life. And also, um, I wasn't seeing my family as much as I wanted to. Um, and, and so at that point, uh, I was out in the ocean that day. and I was like, I got to figure out a way to stick around here in San Diego. And, uh, and, and so then I was like, well, what am I going to do? So I went home and I, and I talked to my partner, um, that morning and I was like, Hey, let's, uh, let's figure out how to stay here. And she was like, well, okay, but how are you going to afford that? <laughs> and, and, I, and, and that's when my head started kind of spinning a little bit. And I was thinking, well, what could I do? I could work in the biotech industry here in San Diego. If I do that, like, what do I bring to the table? And uh, in the science, scientific skills set that I had gained was not entirely amenable um, to working in industry. Um, and so I started thinking, well, what if I could come in from the business side? And, and uh, then I you know, did some volunteering for an angel investing group in the area. Um, I had worked at a couple, business, a couple startups when I was in college uh, to pay my way through college. Um, and, and so at that point, I, I started thinking, okay, if I get into biotech from the business side, then maybe that makes more sense. And, uh, um, and then kind of just went through this, this process of like uh, dive deep into, uh, I, well, I went to, what, I, what actually happened was I, I went to, the one time I went to a consulting club um, meeting, they were doing a case competition with uh, LEK, which is a pretty well-known life sciences consulting firm. And, uh, and I volunteered at that point and, I, and started kind of assessing this, like this case of, uh, liquid biopsy, and um, which is a way to kind of measure or or look at you know biopsy somebody through a um, a blood draw, and I thought it was really interesting. I like the strategy aspects of it, and um, and that's what got me interested in strategy consulting. And um, then I just did a deep dive. Like I didn't know like really anybody that was doing it. I I didn't even know what it was really. And um, and then within the next two months, I um, had done a bunch of case interviews and, and uh, pushed really, really hard and even gotten my PI's uh, permission to take like uh, a couple days off to really focus on, on case interviews and uh, um, was able to uh, secure a job at, at BCG. So uh, BCG was, was awesome. I can tell you guys more about it. Um, uh, and, but with all, all with the idea that I was gonna come back to San Diego and work in the biotech industry, um, and so I worked there for about a year, a little bit over a year, and uh, it was a great experience. Um, 
amazing people. Um, I think that many of these big consulting firms, they, they just do a good job of hiring smart people, but also like interesting and nice people uh, for the most part. Uh, not in every instance, but I, I think, yeah, for the, for the most part, I just really liked the people there. I liked the work. It was very fast paced. Um, the, the things that I liked about it, though, those are some of the things I liked about it. Some of the things I did not like about it personally was um, the, the fact that I had to travel four days a week. Uh, and I was away from home. Uh, that, that's probably a little bit different right now, but we may go back to it, um, you know, after the pandemic is, is over. Um, and, uh, and I knew that I wanted to utilize my scientific skill set um, in the long run. And um, when I was at BCG, I basically, my, my strategy was like, come back to San Diego. And, uh, um, and the reason I, I went to the Dallas office at BCG, uh, not because I wanted to live in Dallas uh, or knew anything about Dallas, but it was cheap. It was like low cost of living and I could try and you know, save up money and, and, and come back. And, uh, and so that's what I did. And, and the BCG model, there's not a lot of biotech or pharma work um, in the Southern system. There's different like regional systems at BCG. And so, um, didn't I worked mostly in the tech industry when I was there, um, but uh, had an opportunity to come back to San Diego, work for Illumina for uh, just under two years. It's an awesome company. They, they focus on genomics, um, and more recently uh, started that started a podcast. In the meantime, because like I realized during this process that like there's just not a lot of career information out there for many PhDs, and and um, I wanted to provide a resource for people to learn about the various options or the various things that many scientists, that scientists do after careers. And so that was kind of the, the idea of the podcast. If you want to check it out, um, there's some really fun interviews, I think. And uh, um, there's a good podcast following too. And, and uh, I'm, I'm not saying that to be, uh, I really doesn't matter to me if people listen to it. Uh, but I, you know, I, I think that the, that the people on there have really great experience. Um, and, and then since then, uh, started up a new position at Resilience. Um, and so, you know, before kind of like opening up some broader questions maybe to what a, what a career in consulting is, um, let me just give a quick plug for Resilience because um, my, my role as head of scientific culture, um, it's, it's an exciting uh, company, it's an exciting startup. And if uh, any of you are interested and, um, you know, we're looking always for like the best and the brightest and um, uh, really scientists and, and engineers um, for the most part that have experience in things like gene therapy, um, genomics, vaccines. Uh, what we're doing is um, we, we were, we have like an unparalleled team of uh, founders uh, and board of directors with like government officials, like former senators um, and uh, FDA commissioner. Um, so it's an exciting company. We were funded at 800 million uh, recently. And um, we're, what we're focusing on is like the next generation of biotech manufacturing. So like complex medicines, uh, things like, you know, uh, the, uh, well, well, things like vaccines. Um, and we're really bringing like a technology forward process to it. Um, so I'll just put in, put in that plug. If you are interested, um, we, like I said, we're looking probably more for people uh, on the science and, and engineering side um, in uh, San Diego and Boston. Uh, if you're interested, feel free to reach out to um, uh, careers at resilience.com. And, uh, um, or if you know anybody that you think would be an excellent candidate and is going on the job market. So that's all a quick interest, uh, introduction of myself, uh, maybe not so quick, but um, I'll draw out some, uh, some, some lessons I learned throughout this whole process. Um, but let me just pause there. Is there anyone that has questions? Everyone, uh, you can type in your questions in the chat box if you have, or you can unmute yourself as well. Meanwhile, uh, I'll uh, arrange the questions, some of the questions that I have for Nick. Nick, I think you can go ahead. So far, we don't have any questions. Okay, sounds good. Feel free to jump in if you do. Um, 
All right, so some of the things that I learned through this process. Uh, number one is start early. Like, don't do what I did. Uh, don't figure it out like a month or two before, if possible. Some of you are in the position where it is already a little late and you, and you just have, like, you just got to figure out a way to double down and, and uh, um, prioritize and, and do it quickly. In other instances, um, I think the, sl the slow and steady and uh, approach is the best because you can build up a network. You can really figure out what it is because one of the challenges that for me was that I really didn't even know what consulting was when I did it, when I started it. Um, I had an idea and, um, and I figured it out along the way, but uh, it would have been great to have more background because there, you know, if I could have tailored it a little earlier, um, I may have just gone straight to the startup community right away. Um, so another, uh, the second thing um, is get diverse experiences and talk to different people. Uh, don't just focus on one thing uh, is, is my, that's my advice. Uh, find out what all the options are. Um, volunteer for something. And uh, this is a challenging thing to say, like not everybody has the uh, availability or opportunity to volunteer. Um, I didn't, I didn't have any kind of financial safety net. Um, and I was still working full time in the lab when I was interviewing and, um, you know, it was very, very busy. But if you can just find something that sounds interesting to you and volunteer for it, it could be like, it could be the consulting club uh, and, and doing cases. It could be, uh, I don't know, doing some sort of local nonprofit or like just setting up some kind of like uh, outreach program or just talking to high school students. Um, you just get, if you get started on anything, uh, what you do, what, what starts to happen is that you figure out what, the, what are the things that really interest you. And, um, you know, it, let's say you're doing science outreach to a high school in, in, in Baltimore, and, you know, and, and you just do that by starting to talk to some high school students or, uh, you know, maybe going to a local high school and be like, hey, I can give a quick talk about science. You know, it's as simple as something like that. And what happens is that you, like, you get out of your comfort zone a little bit. And, uh, and, and it's a little scary, but then you start to realize, whoa, like, I liked this piece of it. Like, you know, I really liked talking about the science. Uh, I really liked, um, you know, seeing a change in, in people's perceptions. Um, and, and I care about the policy. And so maybe that will lead you to go into science policy. Or I liked the organization of this and, 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 uh, um, maybe that will lead you to go into some sort of like business endeavor. It could be anything, but the more experiences you get, the more opportunities you have to make those pivots and figure out what is like exciting for you. Uh, get to know people along the way because um, the more you can help others and, and also uh, like just provide value to other people and, and the more, they're going to be willing to help you. It's, I like firmly believe in the idea of karma. Um, and so it, it's not like we call it networking. Um, but really, it's just getting to know people, making friends, making acquaintances, and it, as much as you can, like help others. Um, and that will in turn come back and and, and it will, it will benefit you in a lot of ways. And you don't do it so that you can get the benefits, but um, it is, you know, it is helpful. Um, the, the fourth thing is know where you're going before you start going somewhere. Um, it's, this is so critical because what I see a lot of times with um, many people in academia is that some people, a lot of people have had really bad experience in a lot of instances, not everyone, but um, you know, it's challenging. And uh, sometimes there's not a lot of mentorship. Um, and people run away from, from an academic uh, background sometimes. And I think that that is 
not the great, not the best way to approach it. Uh, you don't want to be running away from something. You want to be running towards something. And what that means is that um, you have a destination in mind and something that you're excited about. Because if you're running away, you're doing it out of fear. And, and like, if you don't know where you're going, you're not going to get anywhere. Or you're just going to get somewhere that, you don't, that is like not where you wanted to go. Um, and so like really think deeply and introspectively about what you care about deep down and, uh, and make sure that that maps on to whatever you're doing in the future. And maybe that's research, maybe that's staying in academia, or maybe it's consulting, or maybe it's something else. Uh, anything is okay, as long as it's what you value. Um, and then make a plan to get there. And, uh, you know, just like solidly do, do the small things that it takes to, to get there but keep doing it, keep consistent at it. Um, and all those little things build up to something huge. Uh, and, and that's how you kind of shape your career from my perspective. Uh, so let me pause there. Are there any questions? Um, one question that I'd like to bring in at this point in time is, so it's from RLS. Well, I mean, it's not a name, but anyway. <laughs> Uh, wondering about the transition away from bench scientist, do you feel like you were at a disadvantage without an MBA or a different background? No, no. Um, it's a great question. And um, it's something that I worried about when I started at BCG because um, their postgraduate, the people that go in from postgraduate careers um, into consulting, they're generally MBAs. They're people with a business background. Um, the majority of them, I'd say is like 70% or more. Um, and then the rest are PhDs, MDs, lawyers, um, and you all come in at the same level. Uh, and one thing that I found is that, yeah, it might take a little bit longer for me to ramp up, um, compared to an MBA. And this is like, this is a general consensus. I've talked to partners at BCG about this. Um, the general consensus is that you're, you're ramping up, uh, maybe an MBA has a more linear path and their asymptote, you know, starts a little higher. Um, but uh, the PhDs is more kind of like sigmoidal. It's maybe a little flat and it takes a little longer to get to figure out like what what the hell you're doing. And then at some point it's like this inflection and, and you get this rapid growth period. And, you know, there's that kind of flat line or that, that, that um, the linear uh, path of, a, of an MBA, but this uh, kind of sigmoidal path for a PhD, you, well, you get there around the same time, like to, to competence of like understanding how the job really works. Um, it may be, it's a little bit longer, I think, for PhDs, like maybe six months for an MBA, whereas it's maybe eight months to nine months for a PhD. Um, but there's also a higher, like, so, uh, I, I guess asymptote is kind of the right, um, is the right terminology there. There's a higher asymptote there, meaning that like um, many PhDs actually become better consultants in a lot of ways. <laughs> Uh, and I'm, that's not all, all the time, of course, but um, you're, you're smart, you have capabilities. And like, uh, I would say that a, a career in science and, a, and I don't know if this is true with engineering, but at least for me, a career in science broke me down in a lot of ways and like made me doubt myself, made me doubt my confidence and, and my intelligence uh, because I was always around people that were incredibly smart and I was like facing the edge of the known universe, right? And, um, and that's, Kind of a scary situation you feel like you're inadequate in a lot of ways and um but you're not like what you realize is that when you start comparing that to people with different backgrounds you have amazing advantages and and like uh you've learned a process that like helps you solve problems very well um and the scientific process is not really that different from how you think about a business problem uh the only, the, I, I could see a business degree being useful uh, in, in some instances, if you really want to learn about like finance and, and uh, um, you know, kind of dive deep on some of these things, great. 
uh, go do a business degree. Uh, and, and you want to think about like frameworks for how companies solve problems, go do a business degree. But you can figure all that stuff out along the way if, uh, if you get good training. So, I mean, on, sim on a similar note, uh, I mean, the question is, uh, as a PhD student or while you are in basic science, you get trained in uh, something very specific, right? Let's say you, you sort of were an expert in patch class, right? But then uh, in the consulting domain, uh, you have to solve a variety of problems because different companies might have different issues, as far as I can understand. So, I mean, how do you develop confidence and also expertise uh, in terms of like going into something very specific that the clients come up with and trying to solve there? And, you know, you know what, what I mean, right? So yeah. how, do you, how do you maneuver that landscape? You figure it out along the way. Uh, honestly, it's like uh, business problems are not that hard of problems in, in a lot of ways. I mean, like the amount of knowledge you need to get up to speed for most business problems is, it's not a, a huge threshold. It's not like a body of knowledge in science. Um, it takes years and years to really get competent at a, in a science and, uh, and, and to contribute. It doesn't take that as long in business. And so um, you, you, but you do have to practice and get good at um, ramping up really quickly and, and figuring out what you're doing so that you can start contributing. Um, and so you figure out ways to like learn about an industry, like, you know, do a competitive analysis, uh, um, figure out like what the financials look like and, and like how to read an income statement. Like those, those are pretty, um, there it's new material for sure but um it's really not the, like the concepts are pretty basic and, and at bcg they we did like a mini mba program for three weeks where they had all the phds come in and all the and all the jds and mds and um they taught us uh basic business principles and um and it was actually really fun because I got, got to know some really cool people uh, through that process. But um, if you're going into consulting, there's, there's a very, um, they have good training programs to allow you to understand and, and gain some of that like fundamental knowledge. Did you, did you uh, teach yourself some of these concepts before getting into the interview process? Or um, like... No, I, 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 learned, I learned basic, principles of how businesses work. Um, I mean, I, ha I had some context before because I'd worked in businesses, um, but I learned um, a lot of the things that you would need in consulting. Well, I mean, like at least a basic introduction to business and consulting through the case interview process. And yep. then, uh, and, and then it, it, really, it really cements it in like as you're on the job training. Awesome. Okay, we have another question uh, from Peter. Hi, Nick. Uh, thanks for sharing your journey. I'm curious about your jump from BCG to corporate strategy in Illumina. And what are some best practices to pivot towards the client side? If one is interested in biotech, BD strategy, and op, uh, operations, question number one. Okay, it's a long one. So where were, were there specific projects you specialized in while in BCG that made you stand out as a candidate when you made the pivot? And number two, I was curious on your thoughts on BCG versus life sciences based, uh, life sciences focused consulting firms like LEK, et cetera, et cetera, in terms of placement into biotech uh, or strategy. Um, yeah, so those are good questions. Um, the best practices for pivoting into um, into corporate strategy or, or BD or something like that. Uh, know what you want to get. Like if, if, you, if you're utilizing consulting as a pivot point, um, which many people do, and it's a good way to, to do it. Um, if you can try and figure out what you want to do, like 
later on down the road early so that you can shape your experiences to um, be relevant to that. So for example, if you want to do BD, uh, it's helpful to have financial, like uh, to, to learn some financial tools. And so like um, uh, DCF analyses and I don't know, like uh, there's, and, and also like to know how to do, um, there, there's certain types of casework at these consulting firms where they're doing due diligence. And uh, that's like a quick analysis of the company and, and, um, and you know, you're, you're looking at their strategy, you're looking at their competition. Um, those are kind of like really helpful skill sets to get into something like business development um, because that's what you're doing and you're, you're kind of doing it with the lens, through the lens of like science, the science as well. And so make sure that you have a good scientific understanding uh, and then make sure that you have a good understanding of how to do these analyses and that will prepare you for what you want to do. It, but if it's project or product management, there's like product management is another really interesting one. It's almost like you're kind of running a business within a business in a way. And, um, and so, so just kind of know where you want to go and like what it takes to get there. And, and then as you go into consulting and whatnot, shape your, um, shape your, experience to be to to position you in the best possible way to, to do that to get to where you want to be um, consulting is a really great opportunity to pivot i will say um, and to find or to to go into any number of different industries and types of functional roles within those industries um, it, because it, it's uh, you learn a really broad you're you're working in very like small time chunks on a project across a number of different industries. And so you're like getting to see how things work across different industries. You're getting to learn different functions. You're learning how to communicate really well. You're learning how to do analyses from like a business perspective. And those things are applicable to any number of jobs. I know people that have gone into um, like, like the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, for example. I know people that have gone into business development. I know people that have gone to venture capital. Um, I, I know people that have uh started their own like consulting business uh there's a couple of really interesting ones that i don't know if i should talk about right now um but yeah it, it's a good pivot point to go to any number of these different things uh just try and tailor your experience to get to the one that you want to get to yeah so what what you just meant was to focus on transferable skill sets that you can basically take from one job to another mm -hmm. Okay, so in the interest of time, how long, uh, like, do, how many slides do you have? Because there are other questions. Uh, shall I ask those questions or shall we keep? Yeah, going? I think we can focus on that. I mean, like, here, uh, let, let's, let's just get through a couple slides real quick and then um, I'll, I'll focus on the yeah, questions. Sounds good, sounds good. Um, so consulting is, is an interesting career. You, uh, at the big firms, at least, a lot of times there's a decent amount of travel. Um, early on, you're focused more on kind of smaller things, to be honest with you, like the uh, data analyses, slide building, um, preparing uh, information for like partners to uh, talk about with clients. As you get, as you go further and further along the career path, you know, you, uh, as a PhD, you would, you jump in here at the consultant level. Um, uh, before that, you know, some people come in straight from undergrad. Um, then you go into you know, the consultant level. This is for BCG. These are the terminology for BCG. It's not the same for McKinsey or Bain or uh, other uh, firms. But you go from consultant to project leader where you're managing a small team of a few consultants uh, and, uh, and or associates. Um, and then you go to the level of principal where you're managing a bigger team and you're starting to like, work really closely with like bigger name, you know, so the, the earlier, the later you are along the career trajectory, the higher level positions within client organizations you'll be working with, if that makes sense. So partners may be working with the CEO of, of a company or the chief strategy officer or the chief commercial officer uh, or an executive vice president, for example. The principals will also start uh, start working with them and uh, trying to sell um, 
work and um, develop relationships with those people to, um, you know, really build business. And uh, they're managing, and then they're also doing some day-to-day -day management of project leaders and consultants. Um, partners are generally not really doing the management of people. Uh, they're, they're doing the management of principles. Um, and then the principles uh, are, I think I just kind of talked about that, but the, basically the idea is that like the further you go along in this career, career trajectory, the more it involves client interaction, working with people, um, uh, selling, uh, and, and the high level like strategic um, communication. The earlier on, it's more about you're learning the ropes and just figuring out what the job entails. You're getting better analyses. You're preparing things for other people. You, you own specific parts of the project. Like you, you have to really perform um, and, and you have to be good with like figuring out timelines and executing according to those timelines. Um, that's, that's an essential component. Um, but that's kind of the, the way that I see the, the career path um, working out. There's a, you know, if you're just jumping in and want to get started, um, these are the types of things, feel free to take a screenshot or whatever if you guys want to. Um, and it's really just about like understanding the role. Um, so, you know, some of the things I just talked about, uh, as much as you can, like do an internet research, talk to people. This is the most important thing of this whole thing is talk to people that are currently consultants uh, or, you know, that are like one to two years um, past where you are right now. I'd say that's, that's uh, the target of people that you want to really be focusing on because they're the ones that have the time, one, and that um, have recently experienced it. And so they're good resources. Um, and you're essentially kind of testing hypothesis, like the, my, the hypothesis being that like this is the right career path for me. And by talking to individuals, you're gathering data points along the way, and uh, you're and you're analyzing, and you're trying to you're trying to falsify that hypothesis so that this is this should be the path that you're going down. If you can't falsify it, then great, like really push for it. But if it doesn't fit, then move to something else. And that's what the process of networking is about to me. Um, you're gather, gathering data and meeting interesting people and, and figuring out how you can help them. Uh, and then gain experience. Uh, so that's kind of understanding the role. You're gonna prepare your materials. You're gonna do a, a resume and a cover letter. Um, in the resumes, you, you need to quantify. And, and if you wanna get more information, like I talk about uh, basically each of these things within um, an episode of the podcast. Uh, and again, it's onceascientist.net. Um, there, there's a consulting 101 link on there. And uh, uh, for each of those um, discussions, I talk about one of these uh, one of these points. And so there's one on like, what is it? Uh, there's another one on resume uh, and another one on cover letter. Resume and cover letter, and then another one on case, two on case interviews, where I'm actually interviewed in the case interview, and it was like a long time since I did it before that, so it's not great performance. But um, and then there's a getting ready for fit interviews, which is um, you know the general like interview questions, you know, tell me about yourself, or um, you know, like what's a something challenging that you went through. So in preparing your, your resume and cover letter, um, you're going to quantify as much as possible, like really give them evidence that uh, you've accomplished things that are, that are important, that you're a leader, that um, you can communicate well. And, uh, and I talk about those things in more depth in the, in the podcast. And so check that out if you want to. Um, uh, building a cover letter is about telling a story. Um, so, so resume is like a, a one page highlight of like, the impact that you've had on organizations and on people. That's, that's what it is. Like, it's not like the things that you did. It's about how you impacted organizations. Like, uh, I increased revenue by 20% by doing this, you know, for example. Uh, or, you know, if it's like, I 
uh, what, uh, what what's what's uh, how can I, how can I show impact with this? Like, I set up a uh, training. Uh, I set up a, a training program within the lab, uh, and this is like you know not the best wording, but I set up a training program within the lab um, that impacted 14 students um, by uh, building out a three-day training with five uh, modules or something like that, um, and that shows that you've that you've organized things, that you've like um, that you can communicate with other people, that you can lead on things. Um, and those were those are the points you're trying to show in your resume. In the cover letter, you're telling a, a story like, "Here's where I am right now. Here's my background. Here's uh, why I want to come and work for you in this location. And here are the things that I bring to the table. And you're and you're actually literally telling a story about like, uh, I I can persevere." You know, or like I have perseverance, and you know, you, then you tell like a quick story about like about persevering through something. But but basically, you're trying to tie it back to um, the things that they care about. What are they looking for in a consultant? What uh, what types of cultural values does this company care about? And um, can you show that you have what it takes, and and that um, you fit within their culture? Culture is really important in a business. Um, and and you always want to show you you always want to try and figure out what the culture is of the business and then uh first of all make sure that that fits with your the way that you view the world and and then second of all be able to uh, show that that is the way that you view the world and, and that you have kind of focused on those things before case interviews um you know these are like quick questions uh, you know, they're, they're, the case interviews are essentially what a model of what you would do as a consultant. Uh, so in an eight week project, um, you'll have a number of different, you'll have a problem that you have to solve for a business. And, uh, and that problem may involve a bunch of different components. You're going to be responsible for a certain part of it at least. And, um, and then can you basically lay out an approach to to do that execute on it and then provide a recommendation back to a client and that's what you're doing in a case interview it, it's just they're simulating it in like 30 minutes so you'll actually lay out a framework for how you would solve this problem if it's you know if it's about helping this company get back to uh profitability well first i'm going to look at uh, profit is broken down by revenue and costs and and uh um and so first I would want to look at the revenue. So what are our sources of income? Uh, you know, essentially you're laying out how you're going to solve the problem first, showing it to them. Uh, and then, and, and then kind of simulating the process of, of what you would do in a case, which is gather data, test hypotheses, um, and drive toward a solution and, and or recommendation. And then at the end of that 30 minute, 40 minute interview, you're going to provide a very solid recommendation for what the company should do. Um, so that takes, it takes a lot of practice. Um, and I would say you want to do it with, um, with people in the consulting club uh, where you are, like people that are kind of peers in your applicant pool, um, but also as much as you can, like some uh, uh, former and current consultants. Um, I would say it takes about 50 cases or more on, on average to really get good at these. Um, for most people, but for some people, they're just like, you know, smarter than me and can do it in five or 10 or something. Um, I wouldn't count on that though, because there's a lot of smart people that go into this process. Um, so, and, and, and I'm not gonna downplay it, it's competitive. Um, it, it's, it's challenging to get in. Um, and then you're gonna practice fit interviews, like actually telling a story about yourself to other people. Uh, so they're, they're going to ask you questions about like, tell me about a difficult situation that you had. Um, my, the way that I usually recommend this is for, to me, best practice is, um, I'm going to basically, uh, what, the way, the way that I approached this was I, I got a list of a couple dozen questions online that people might ask in these types of interviews. And, uh, and then I, categorize them and and uh kind of built uh 
a model for like the themes of questions that people might ask. And then I would distill it down to like four or five themes and they could be like teamwork, you know, like a time when I participated in, as part of a team. Uh, another thing is like leadership. Um, and maybe it's another one is like a difficulty. Uh, but you, you essentially distill it down into a few themes. Uh, all, you know, like maybe you'll have 30, or 30 questions that people could ask you in interviews. And then you, bullet, you, you categorize them into these themes. And then prepare a really good story for each of those themes. And it only takes four or five stories. Um, and you should show that like you have made an impact how you've done it. And, and you're honestly like literally telling a story like a movie or a book. Like you're building up the context, you're, or you're, you're, you're sharing the context behind what it was, you're, you're stating the problem that you had to solve, and then you're going to talk about all the, you know, um, you're, you're going to build it up to like a, a climactic moment uh, where, you know, I, I'll give you an example of like what I just told you about how um, I went through this PhD process and like, and, and I failed for three years. Um, that was kind of building that up to the climax. And then what happened is like, I, I decided I was going to, uh, the action that I took was I, I decided I was going to um, push and, and finish this PhD. And, uh, and so um, essentially that's, that's the art of storytelling. And it's so important, like so much more important not just in science, or I mean, not just in business, but in science. This is like a, an essential life skill. Um, the better you can get at telling stories, the, the, I guarantee, I promise you this, the more you will succeed in at what you want to do. Um, and, and so it, it takes practice. Um, and, and, but it's, it's, it's also a skill. It's not something that like I have been good at um, it's something that I've really, really had to fo uh, focus and work on. So that's the process of, of uh, um, do, getting into consulting. This is kind of the general timeline I would recommend. Uh, it's not the one that I followed myself, of course, but um, yeah, there's my, there's my presentation. <laughs> Open for questions. Okay. Um... Do you want me to uh, go to the questions? Sure. Yep. Okay. So Omkar has asked, how did you, how did your day-to-day -day change over time uh, from BCG to Illumina to resilience? Mm. Um, okay. So it was really hectic and crazy at BCG. Um, I mean, I'll just be honest with you. Sometimes I was like early on, I really wanted to get good at it, good at the job uh, within the first uh, week. And and so, I mean, sorry, not the first week, the first few months. Um, and so I spent, like, I would work from 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. sometimes. Um, and that was me, but I think a lot of people do that. Um, and I don't think it's super healthy. It's not what everyone wants to do. Um, but it's just kind of sometimes doing what you have to to figure out how to get good at something. Um, so it was really intense. Uh, that intensity, I, I, by the time I finished at BCG, I had learned a lot of those things and, and had like developed a skill set that I could utilize. Um, and I utilized that skill set at Illumina and it was just clearly just not as crazy or busy. <laughs> uh, and so I had time to start a podcast um, because I wanted to. And, uh, and so the work-life balance was uh, much more sustainable at Illumina. Um, and then at startup, uh, it's interesting, uh, working at a startup is like, you kind of get to, you, you get to make a lot of decisions about how you're gonna work. And, um, and I can like do this in the middle of the day if I want to, because, um, because no one is like really telling me what to do on a day-to-day -day basis. Like I'm creating my own job essentially as, as I go along. And uh, that's, you know, that, that's a bit different. Um, it, 
it does end up being kind of intense a lot of times because you've got like deliverables, like you're under a lot of pressure, you know, like, like the company has to like continue to raise money in some cases. In this instance, in the company I'm working for, I think, you know, we're pretty well capitalized. We don't have to worry that as much about that. Um, but like that also means that we have to grow really quickly. Uh, and so it, there's, there's a level of intensity that is, um, you know, it can be, can be stressful, but I think it's honestly personally exciting at the same time. So one question that I have is like a lot of my friends uh, and sometimes I as well, we, we suffer through some of the issues. Uh, I mean, you, you could be passionate about what you do on the bench, let's say, or in the lab, but then it is not well paid. Some of us want to get paid more. So there is this issue of money, but you may, I mean, since we haven't seen much of, like I personally haven't seen much of company or consulting side, I don't know whether I like that job or not. So there is this balance between money, passion, uh, I would say boredom, and you mentioned work-life balance as well. So, I mean, there's this uncertainty, let's say if you want to join a cons uh, startup instead of a consulting, right? So how mm -hmm. did you navigate that space? You know, you must have asked this question to yourself again and again. I did, I did. and. Um... And part of it was like the way, part of the way I navigated it was by going into consulting um, because I knew that I needed to like at least make a certain amount of money. And like, I didn't have a safety net uh, at all. Uh, my, I, I don't come from like my, my family. I grew up very poor. And, um, and so it was really scary. Um, and uh the reason, part of the reason why I went into consulting, because I knew like that would get me to a certain like, I, I would be able to make a living, and it, as long as I was making something you know similar to that, or like, it was fine. I I don't need I don't need to be rich. I don't want to be rich. I'm working on my freaking garage. Um, <laughs> I got it, and and I'm totally happy. So, um, I think that that there is a reality of like interest versus uh versus being able to sustain and, and build a life uh that is what you want outside of what you're doing and um and and i will be 100 percent honest with you and say that yes i made some trade-off and like i did some things i'm doing some things that personally are probably not right now. Right now what I'm doing, I love what I'm doing. Like, but when I was at BCG, I wasn't that excited about some of the problems I was working on. Um, and it didn't have that uh, deep, uh, like, passion for finding an, an IT vendor for a, a government agency. <laughs> like, right. Um, but the problems were still, like, the process that you take uh, is, is still really interesting and like you're learn like everything that I've done after after I've left science is has always been very interesting um, and so like you learn new skill sets uh, it pay it makes up for it in a lot of other ways um, but the way that I navigated it was like I went into consulting so I could kind of get that base level and then uh, and, and that's when I jumped off to work for a startup so um, but I could see it any number of different ways. Um, you can go directly and work for a startup if, if you want to kind of utilize your scientific skills or you can go into other things, but, uh, and you can always, you know, stay in science. Um, it's just figuring out like what, what are the trade-offs that you care about and, and, uh, um, and then, yeah, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll go, I'm, uh, I'll move on to the next question. Getting into consulting can be a very competitive process. How did, uh, did you have fallback careers planned? Question mark. Can you name some uh, other career paths that people interested in consulting should explore as additional options? Um, yeah. Like backups, simple as that. Yeah, let me actually just hang on. I'm going to stop sharing here. Um, yeah, business development's really interesting. Um, uh, product management is another really interesting, uh, uh, opportunity or option. Venture capital is really interesting. 
um, those ones have, and, there, and there's others, um, those are the big ones, like from a business perspective from in my mind. Um, there's also other things that are, uh, I don't know, just different. Like there's um, like public policy that, that uh, is, is really interesting, um, you know, working for nonprofits. Uh, I would, what I would do is, I mean, you can go, like, if you want to get a sense, you can look at the podcast and just see, like, what are the categories and different things that people have done on that and, you know, kind of get a lay of the land. But um, I would say that the ones that are kind of more similar to consulting are probably going to be business development, um, product management, uh, like I was saying, venture capital. Investment banking, if you have like a really, really quantitative background, um, that is like a, even more intense than consulting. And uh, I, I personally think less interesting, um, but I, they, if, if you really want to make a lot of money like early and quick, then that might be a good option. Okay. Um, another question from Ranjan. How much can you negotiate what kinds of projects you get involved in in a big company like ECG? You don't get to negotiate very much at all at first. Um, you're, you're assigned projects and you're showing that you can execute on those things and get good at, and, and uh, um, be able to function in a, uh, a high pressure environment. And then, um, as you get more and more experience, you're able to leverage that to say, you know, like you're, you're essentially always on the job market as a consultant because um, you work on a project for a short period of time. And then uh, once that project finishes, you have to figure out what's the next project you're going to be on. And uh, you're networking within the company. And it's almost like you're on the interview process, like over and over and over. It's like this microcosm of like, constantly applying for jobs um, and so you get more and more leverage to be able to choose what you're doing later as you as you show that you have executed and and uh, um, yeah, early on and that's why it's good to focus very early on of getting good at the job okay, one question that I skipped uh, was um, how were you able to leave consulting to go back to research like research as in, hmm. in quotes. so I'm not yeah so I'm not, I'm not working in research myself. I'm not doing the actual research. Um, my job is head of scientific culture. And uh, I'm basically building out like a cultural model within the company that um, people are, where they're excited to um, work here. And we're um, building out like a good remote working environment, for example. Um, and uh, yeah, the, so those are kind of examples of, um, of how we, uh, of, of things that, that I'm doing, I'm, I'm, I have to understand the science, um, at least to a certain level. Um, and, and I get to talk about the science because I, I go to, you know, meetings where we're like figuring out the strategy behind some of our, uh, platforms that we're, that we're building. And, uh, and so, I really like that aspect. Um, I didn't have as much of that when I was at Illumina. Um, and not because, it was just because of the role I was in at Illumina, which was more commercial, like focused on the sales team. All right, uh, we have one more question from Elena. If you know you want to use consulting as a launch pad to do something else, like corporate strategy, how do you talk about that in the consulting interview? <laughs> you don't. <laughs> Uh, I mean, you can, you can be a little bit honest. I, I was, and like, they, they asked me, I remember, um, one time they asked me, so like, why do you want to do consulting? And like, what do you want to do in five years? And, and I said, that's a really good question. And I'll give you the answer that I might have said, and maybe I think this is close to what I said. Um, yeah, that's, that's a great question. Uh, you know, first of all, I, I'm excited about consulting and uh, I want to, uh, you know, con continue down this path. And, and I think um, 
you know, assuming that uh, I'm performing well and, and, you know, continue to be excited about the job or continue to be excited, um, I, want to, I, I want to continue as uh, a consultant or I want to continue at, at Boston Consulting Group until the level of partner. Um, because I think that, you know, for this reason and this reason and this reason. Um, uh, I am also interested in, in the biotech startup community. Uh, I've had this experience and this experience. Uh, and so, you know, uh, all options are on the table, but at this point, I'm really excited about consulting. Okay, fantastic. Uh, I think uh, those are the questions that we have for now. And um, yeah. Do you have more slides, Nick? Nope, I'm I good. Think we are out of time. <laughs> okay. What, sorry, what's that? I'm saying, uh, do you have more slides? I I, I think we are just, uh, uh, I mean, out of time. So we. Uh, no, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. So um, yeah, thanks everyone for for coming and and uh, um, yeah. If you, yes. If you have any questions, uh, I. Yeah, I mean, this, that, that was a great session. I think uh, it was kind of interactive, uh, so many questions and a lot of appreciation coming in from everyone for being honest, uh, for being sharing your story. And uh, I can't thank you enough for taking your time out and doing this for us. Um, yeah, please join me in thanking Nick. So thanks, thanks a lot, Nick. All right, sounds good. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Thank you.